I have two vassals. One of them loves me and the other hates my guts. But that's just the Shogun 2 experience. You gotta love it. Adultery and betrayal and murder and, and war and like the whole range of human experiences. Hey, I'm Triple Z Hacker and welcome to Total War Shogun 2, a game with vassals, your ever loyal subordinates who never cease to backstab you when it's least convenient. Now, vassals are entities or a person regarded as having mutual obligation to a lord or monarch within feudalism. And when it comes to Shogun Du diplomacy, I've read countless forum discussions detailing player frustration from betrayals, and vassals in particular bear the brunt of this blame. This has led me to the question, are vassals worthless? To answer that, I'll first begin with how do you even get vassals in Shogun 2, and then outline the advantages and disadvantages they bring to your campaigns. As always, if you love subjugating the little guys in strategy games like I do, then you'll love my channel, so subscribe. I appreciate any support. In Shogun 2, there are three ways to gain vassals. The first two methods are standard and happen frequently throughout your campaigns, whereas the last is extremely rare. I'll cover and demonstrate with examples all three options and discuss how they will impact your relationships with your vassals. The first way to get a vassal in Shogun 2 is by using force. In this example, I'm playing as the Oda in this campaign, and I'm going to show you how to get a Tokugawa vassal by force. So the Tokugawa army has ventured into the province of Owari, leaving the castle at Mikawa undefended, so we'll march right around them and go besiege the castle. With that victory, we have the option to make the Tokugawa a vassal. And so we'll make them a vassal here, and in doing so, you can see in the Diplomacy tab, now the Tokugawa are under the Oda as a vassal. The main issue, however, with getting vassals through force is that you'll notice the Tokugawa relations with us is hostile. And the reason for that is because of this debuff right here, past grievances. Past grievances occurs whenever you get a vassal through force. I'll discuss past grievances at length more in another section of this video. Now let's move on to the next way to get vassals in Shogun 2. The second way of getting a vassal in Shogun 2 is by diplomacy. And in this example, I'm continuing with the same campaign as the Oda, and I'm going to show you how to diplomatically vassalize the Saito clan. So we'll open the diplomacy tab here, and you'll notice that we are at war with the Saito. This is the case with every single Oda campaign, you start at war with the Saito clan. So what we'll do is enter negotiations with them, request peace, and we have the option to make them a vassal. We're going to select this option, and you can see that the deal remains satisfactory, therefore they would be willing to become our vassal. We'll also get a trade agreement, and let's get a arranged marriage and send the proposal. They accept, and now we have the Saito clan under the yoke of the Oda. It's important to remember that the Saito clan will always accept vassalization from you as the Oda, so keep that in mind in your Oda campaigns as an option when dealing with the Saito. Now with the Saito as our second vassal, I want to just show the stark contrast that our vassals' relations with us are. As you can see, the Saito remain very friendly, whereas the Tokugawa are hostile. Now why is this? Well, it's because of the two different methods we used to vassalize each of these clans. You'll see that vassalization through force means that they'll get the past grievances debuff, whereas if you diplomatically vassalize a clan, they will not have that debuff and instead only get a smaller debuff. Therefore, their relations will remain higher with us, meaning they will be less likely to betray or become disloyal towards us sooner. So it's advantageous to diplomatically vassalize clans as opposed to vassalization through force. Now there are other methods by which to get a diplomatic vassal and I'm going to show another example doing so with the Imagawa clan. Here is the second way to gain a vassal diplomatically in Shogun 2, and I'm going to be showing the diplomatic vassalization of the Imagawa clan. So, I've been at war with the Imagawa for some time, took their other province, and they have no field armies. So what I'm going to do now is besiege their last province, which is their home province. Instead of actually besieging it, we're going to just continue the siege, 
because this is a bit of a combination of force and diplomacy because we're besieging their castle, but we'll open the diplomacy tab here and enter negotiations with the Imagawa, request peace, and there we have the option to make them a vassal. They are willing to accept this because they have no armies remaining on the fields and only possess a single province, which is their home province. With all those requirements met, we're able to diplomatically vassalize them. And now we have another vassal under the yoke of the Oda, and if we check the relations that the Imagawa have with us, they are friendly. We don't have that past grievances debuff, because we didn't actually conquer their castle, instead we besieged it and then vassalized them. Obviously the other debuffs remain there, but for now their relations remain high, which is essential because that means they're less likely to be disloyal anytime soon. Now I'll move on to the final way to get a vassal in Shogun 2. It's very tricky, rare, and circumstantial. The last and final way to get a vassal in Shogun 2 is by vassalizing a clan that already has a vassal. So if you vassalize a clan, their vassal will also become your vassal afterwards. I know, relatively complicated, right? <laughs> but um, as you'll see, I reloaded the Oda campaign for this example, and the Tokugawa remain alive. I actually bypassed the Tokugawa to head towards the Imagawa, because in diplomacy, you'll notice that the Imagawa have a vassal of the Tokugawa. So whenever we besiege their province here, continue the siege and go to diplomacy here, we can request peace, make them a vassal, and make the proposal and in doing so we gained not only the imagawa but also the tokugawa as a vassal too so two vassals for the price of one it's a very rare occurrence for this to happen in your campaigns because there are only two clans that start off with vassals that is the imagawa having a vassal the tokugawa which i showed here or the wasugi having the yamana nuchi as a vassal. That covers all the ways to get vassals in Shogun 2, but why should you get them to begin with? Well now it's time to cover the advantages and disadvantages of vassals in this glorious game. The main advantage of getting vassals in Shogun 2 is that they act as excellent buffers between you and your enemies for your campaigns. In this example here, I have a Takeda campaign where I have two vassals in the Kiso and the Anagakoji. These two clans are excellent vassals because their provinces control key mountain passes that connect my core provinces to central Japan. When I enlarge the campaign map here, you can see that the Kiso make for an excellent buffer between the Oda and myself, whereas the Anagakoji are an excellent buffer between the Ikoiki and my core provinces as well. If you get vassals in your campaigns, I recommend you use them for this purpose because as buffers, they're going to protect you from incursions from other major clans, and it's going to enable you to divert your focus and attention elsewhere throughout your campaign. Since my two vassals guard my western front, I'm able to expand eastward against other clans while I have less stress or worry over whether I'm going to be attacked from a different direction. I really recommend you get vassals for this purpose alone. Another advantage to getting vassals in Shogun 2 is that every vassal grants one additional honor to your daimyo in your campaigns. As you can see here in the character details, you'll notice that my honor is a total of six, and that is because vassals established plus three. If we go to diplomacy real briefly, you can see that I have a total of three vassals in the Saito, Tokugawa, and Imagawa. Each vassal therefore grants me one additional honor. When it comes to honor in Shogun 2, honor gives you extra diplomatic relations with all surrounding clans because your clan is respected. It's not so beneficial in the early to mid game pre-realm divide, but in the late game when you become Shogun, it's immensely powerful and useful as diplomacy becomes much more of an option for your campaigns. Additionally, when it comes to honor, the maximum amount you can see visible for your daimyo is 6, but the total amount you can get is actually 9. And with 9 honor, you have 3 in reserve, which enables you to even loot provinces, getting that extra income quickly into your economy if you choose to do so. There are 3 guaranteed and immediate advantages when gaining vassals in Shogun 2. The first of which is that whenever you vassalize another clan through force, you will receive 1 one additional unit. So in this example playing as the Oda once again in this campaign, I'm going to vassalize the Tokugawa by force, so we'll march over here and besiege the settlement. When we win, we can make the Tokugawa vassal, and by doing so, 
we receive one additional unit in the form of Yari Ashigaru. Typically, it will always be Yari Ashigaru, but sometimes if you vassalize enough clans, you have the potential to receive better units. I'll do further testing on this, but in this campaign, when playing as the Oda one time, I vassalized the Satake and received a Oda Long Yari Ashigaru, so it is possible to receive better units. Now, this only applies when vassalization through force. So, I'll give an example here with the Diplomacy tab. We will vassalize the Saito via Diplomacy. And whenever we do this, you will see that we have not received an additional unit through vassalizing the Saito because it was not by force, but rather through Diplomacy. So again, it's only through force that you receive this additional unit. The second immediate and guaranteed advantage when vassalizing another clan in Shogun 2 is that you will enter a brief period of truce with them. And what do I mean by that? Well, as your vassal, they're not going to betray you or backstab you when they're relatively weak. In the case of the Tokugawa here, we just vassalized them and they only have three units, so that means they're less likely to betray us as we are much stronger than they are. But over time, throughout a couple of turns, they will build up and become stronger once again, and if you are weak bordering them, so for instance if I leave Awari relatively undefended and the Tokugawa have a large stack of forces here, they are going to strike, backstab me, and try to take Awari because the AI is greedy and takes advantage of player weakness. So in that period of the Tokugawa rebuilding, that is an effective truce between myself and my vassal. The third immediate and guaranteed advantage that vassals give you in your campaigns is that they pay tribute to you. If we open the finance tab here, you can see under the other section that vassals grant you a portion of tribute. Although it is not really that substantial, it's still beneficial to get that extra income. And additionally, if you'll notice the garrisons that these vassals provide for their provinces that you don't have to maintain with upkeep or keep troops stations there. You can see the Saito here in Mino have a large garrison along with the Tokugawa and Mikawa have a full army as well. Additionally, the Imagawa and the Hojo are also getting greater garrisons in their provinces. So again, you don't really have to maintain control completely over these provinces, which saves you time because some of these provinces, like Mino for instance, don't really have any special buildings or anything, so there's no point in directly controlling it completely. Obviously sometimes there is if you want the income for yourself, but regardless, the Saito have a very beefy army there and are able to defend Mino pretty well in their own regard as a vassal to you. So again, these are just some of the other advantages that vassals provide. The last advantage I want to mention when getting vassals in Shogun 2 is that they're more than likely going to accept any trade agreements you offer them because they are your vassals. However, at the higher difficulties and depending on their relations with you, sometimes they will be unwilling to accept, particularly if they have a very valuable trade resource. In the case of this campaign here playing on normal, what I'm going to do is demonstrate that with the Tokugawa here, we can request a trade agreement and it's satisfactory, so they will be willing to accept. And then if we go to the Saito here as well, we can request peace, make them a vassal. Once we get that secured, then we have a trade agreement and of course they're willing to accept that as well. It largely depends on a variety of factors. Again, when I was testing this on harder difficulties with the Tokugawa, for instance, the Tokugawa were unwilling to accept a trade agreement because of certain debuffs such as the past grievances which I will touch on in the disadvantages section but for the most part again they will more than likely accept trade agreements but it just ultimately depends on what difficulty you play on and their relations to you. Even if they don't accept initially they might be willing to trade with you in the future. In order to secure these trade agreements with your vassals though you need to establish a direct land connection to them. In the case of this campaign playing as the Oda of course I am bordering both the Saito and Tokugawa meaning I'm able to trade freely with them but if you do not have a land connection with your vassals, then what you need to do is you need to build the level 3 port, which can be found here. It is the trading port. Of course, I will provide another example of this where I have a vassal, but I'm unable to trade with them without that port. With the Imagawa now as a vassal, if we open diplomacy here, you can see that we have friendly terms with them, but we are unable to trade with them because our ports in our home province are at full capacity and that we need to establish a sea route, so we need to build a trading port in order to trade with them. And that is because we do not have a direct, continuous land connection from their home province to our home province. So from Suruga, we go to Tatomi, and then Mikawa is owned by the Tokugawa, meaning that 
this severs the land connection between Suruga and Owari. Even though the Tokugawa are have become our vassal, it does not matter because we need to directly own this in order to have a direct land connection and secure a land trade agreement with the Imagawa. So instead, what we would have to do is build a level 3 port, the trading port, in order to trade with our vassal. I hope that makes sense for you all, and securing trade agreements with your vassals is very beneficial as it does increase their relations with you and you can get some good resources from them. Again, sometimes they will be hesitant to accept depending on difficulty, so you just have to be patient and maybe if you can secure other resources across the map, they would be more than likely to trade with you since they want those resources for themselves. Just keep all of this in mind for your campaigns and know that trading with your vassals is a great advantage. One of the disadvantages and arguably also a slight advantage to vassals is that they add to your level of fame. So you have to be aware when you get vassals because your level of fame, once it reaches 100, triggers Realm Divide. Depending on the type of campaign you select, whether it be short, long, or domination determines how much each annex province is worth based on its fame. So in a short campaign, a province is worth six fame, in a long it's worth five, and in domination it's worth four. Whereas each vassal province is worth only four fame throughout all types of campaigns. So when you're playing a short campaign, it's pretty useful to get vassals because it's less fame than it would be to annex the province itself. Just be aware of your fame throughout your campaigns, and if you get vassals, careful, because you could get a vassal and suddenly you'll trigger Realm Divide. So again, keep that in mind when dealing with vassals and expanding in Japan. One of the biggest disadvantages in Shogun 2 when it comes to vassals is the negative factor past grievances, which affects your relationship with them greatly. As you can see here with my Tokugawa vassal, they view me as hostile because of this negative factor. And I got this negative factor because I vassalized the Tokugawa through force, which I mentioned earlier. And of course, this negative relationship with my vassal is a great security threat to my clan because they are more than willing going to become disloyal and potentially backstab me at any moment. Shogun 2 diplomacy is already lacking as is, so your vassals, even with good relationships, have the potential to backstab you. Therefore, having this negative of a relationship is a recipe for disaster. Now, the past grievances negative factor, I think, contributes to most of the player base viewing vassals as not viable or a waste of time or even worthless, which is the driving force of this video. And I truly wish that this factor wasn't in the game. I think there should be some negative factors, obviously, but this one is so severe that it basically makes it to where you have to wait a long period of time before you can mend your relationship with your vassal. I truly wish it wasn't in the game, to be honest, because I think then there would be a lot more options and player freedoms when it comes to using diplomacy in Shogun 2. Another disadvantage to having vassals is that they constantly drag you into wars. This being the exact example of it, where the Saito, our vassal, is under attack by the Hattori, and we have to defend them. If we were to decline, it breaks the alliance with our vassal, meaning that we would suffer an honor penalty, and all surrounding clans around us would get a diplomatic debuff modifier against us. Alright, so here's another example of your vassals dragging you into wars. Of course, playing as the Takeda, I have the Hojo as my allies, I made the Ashina a vassal in Fukushima, and of course, the Hojo declare war on them, so my ally declares war on an ally. All hope is failing, my lord! Our men are shaken by this terrible event! This happens in your campaigns as you get vassals, and so they drag you into further wars, and also can ruin your own alliances. So again, this is a huge disadvantage when getting vassals. Another disadvantage when it comes to vassals is that typically they will not join any extra wars. So for instance, in this campaign as the Takeda, you can see that I have one, two, three, four, five vassals, and I have many enemies, but some of my enemies are only at war with one of my vassals. So for instance, the Ashina here are only at war with these enemies. If I would ask them to join these wars alongside me, they will refuse, even though they are my vassal. So again, this happens quite frequently in your campaigns, and also the Ashina are friendly with us, so again, they're looking after their own interests as vassals, and they're very tiny and very weak, so likely they will not join many of the wars that you have to fight on each vassal's behalf. So that is a huge negative factor when it comes to having vassals. 
Another disadvantage along the same lines of vassals refuse to join your wars with you is that they also have poor coordination with your forces whenever they are in the war with you. It's very difficult to use AI allies in Shogun 2 because you can't leave them any objectives or targets. I'll give an example here where you can see I'm at war with the Hojo, the Satake and Ashina, my two vassals are in it, and the Satake are marching north while the Hojo are to the south. It's a glaring issue because you'd love for there to be more options diplomatically for the player and have the ability for the player to manage their vassals accordingly and coordinate forces and have it to where you're fighting alongside other clans more often in your campaigns. And so again, it's one of those things that really makes most players question if vassals are even useful in conflicts because again they're not really using their forces in a right fashion and you don't really have many options to give them which in my opinion is a travesty and one that i wish was fixed in shogun 2. the last disadvantage i wanted to mention when it comes to vassals is that vassals are disloyal as you can see here the tokugawa once my vassal has decided to become a backstabbing son of a bitch and declare war on me betraying me and my clan and trying to break free from their vassalage. Yet this outcome is inevitable when dealing with vassals because the Shogun 2 AI is programmed to expand, to be greedy, and to take territory. Regardless of what you do diplomatically, you can only delay this outcome because again your vassals are going to betray you regardless of what you do diplomatically. And this is why most of the player base I feel has grown resentful towards vassals and despises using them. And this is a major reason why I made this video because this disadvantage is such a hindrance to using vassals in Shogun 2 that they become a major headache and thorn in your side throughout any campaign. Those are all the disadvantages on vassals. Next, I'm going to discuss how vassals are affected pre-realm divide and post-realm divide whenever you become Shogun. When you initiate Realm Divide in Shogun 2, you've entered the end game, where it is your clan versus the rest of Japan. And you best believe your vassals are going to betray the ever-loving shit out of you whenever you trigger it. Regardless of whatever diplomatic relations you've had prior to Realm Divide, whenever it begins, they are going to betray you, no matter what diplomatic actions you take. Initially, some might stay by your side, but eventually they will betray you. And as you can see here, the negative factor associated with Realm Divide is so staggering that it's going to be virtually impossible to maintain friendly relations with any clan. And along with this, I've also have some brief campaign footage where I triggered Realm Divide, and I lost basically all of my vassals. Uh, initially, the Azai declared war on me right away. Most of my other vassals just fought each other in wars, or just didn't join other wars and broke alliances with me. And later on, the Hojo and Tokugawa, both my vassals that stuck with me initially for a brief period of time eventually did declare war on me. The prevailing opinion among the Shogun 2 player base is that it's not beneficial to get vassals pre-realm divide because you're going to lose them once you trigger realm divide. I'm of the opinion that there's a much more nuanced and middle ground approach to this issue, but regardless it is quite disappointing that you lose all your vassals when you trigger realm divide. However, when you become Shogun of all Japan, vassals become a lot more viable in your campaigns. Because when you become Shogun, you reach a stage that I like to call post-realm divide, where you have established a Bakufu, the Shogunate. And what you will do then is whenever you conquer provinces and establish vassals, those vassals are more than willingly going to be loyal towards you because not only are you the Shogun and you have the extra diplomatic relations boost, but you also don't have the associated negative factors that come with realm divide because these clans are being established after you triggered Realm Divide. And therefore, vassals become a lot more viable to your campaigns when you're Shogun, and as you are consolidating your power and conquering all of Japan. Ultimately, vassals are not worthless, but their use is limited or situational at best. They remain a unique feature with untapped potential because Shogun 2 is not known for its intricate diplomatic gameplay and vassals epitomize this lack in player options. Yet a game with Total War in its title implies there was little room for diplomacy. 
It would be intriguing if there were more options present, or if vassals and allies had more significance towards your clan becoming shogun. Regardless, there is certainly a discrepancy between the players' expectations that our vassals will join alongside us and lay down their lives for our glory, than the reality which is that samurai were not so loyal, and most wanted to ensure the safety of their clan and choose the winning side. I recommend in your campaigns to be constantly aware of threats and be on your guard against enemies and vassals alike. Once again, like and subscribe for more Shogun 2. I hope you found this video both entertaining and informative. Thank you for watching and take care.